Hello everyone, I'm Bruffy1322 and in this video we're going to be exploring something that I haven't investigated properly despite it being in the game since 2013, namely catch-up. I've not talked about it before mainly because we just never use it when racing. I spoke about it in my first ever racing video for GTA 5 back in 2013 where I couldn't believe Rockstar made this a thing and quickly discounted it as something we wouldn't be using if we wanted to race properly but I've never actually tested it, so I took the opportunity of a bit of downtime between DLCs to run some tests. This video will show how it works, what effect it has, and debunk some myths along the way. So basically, when catch-up is turned on in the race lobby, which it is by default for all random lobbies that aren't set to non-contact, it reduces straight line speed for the person in first place in the race. It doesn't affect cornering or braking ability, just top speed and to a lesser degree acceleration. The main issue is with top speed though as you can see in this comparison. On the left is the Krieger from my top speed testing when alone and on the right is when catch up is turned on in a race lobby and you're in first place. Under normal circumstances the Krieger has a top speed of around 127 miles per hour but with catch up turned on that top speed drops to around 108 miles per hour. That's an almost 20 mile per hour difference, which is huge. If the Krieger had that top speed under normal circumstances, it would actually be in second last place for the entire supercars class, only quicker than the Voltic. Catch up only affects the person in first place in the race. You're not slowed down by a little less if you're in second, or sped up if you're at the back. If you're in first, you're slower. If you're anywhere else, you're going at normal speed without any external effects, which is also the same speed that first place would be going if catch up was turned off. In addition, if first place finishes the race, the catch up slowdown effect doesn't get transferred to second place and so on, and the effect is always the same. It doesn't get any stronger or weaker depending on how far in front you are, for example. Now, while I said that the slowdown effect is always the same, that only applies to any race with four or more people. If there are two or three people in a race, the person in first place isn't slowed down by quite as much, as you can see from these examples. The Krieger drops about four miles per hour when there's only one other person, and by around 11 miles per hour when there's two other people. Four people seems to be the limit here, with the same decrease in speed experienced if you're in first place of a four player race, 16 player race, 30 player race or anything in between. So how does this translate to lap time? Well here's a comparison again with the Krieger from my lap time testing on the left and with catch up on in first place on the right and the difference is a fairly substantial two seconds per lap. The Krieger goes from basically being the joint fastest car in the supercars class to only being able to achieve a lap time that would put it into sixth place. Basically the same pace as an RE7B. And it only gets this level of lap time because it's a corner heavy track and the Krieger is already incredible in that situation. If anything, this is a testament to how little top speed matters when the rest of the car is so good on a normal circuit. Any car that relies more on its top speed to be quick, for example a Devest 8 in the supercars class or a Pariah in the sports class will be much more negatively affected. Now obviously every car will be affected differently and not every car is going to lose the same amount of speed. For example, the Cyclone drops to around 105 miles per hour for its top speed with catch up on in comparison to 116 miles per hour under normal circumstances. A drop of just over 10 miles per hour in comparison to the 20 mile per hour drop that we saw with the Krieger. But one thing is for certain, if you're in a race with catch up turned on and you're in first place you're going a hell of a lot slower than normal. You're basically punished for doing well. Unless you're in a Tesseract. For some bizarre reason, and it's not because it's an electric car as I just showed with the Cyclone, the Tesseract is basically unaffected by catch up. The main theory so far is its really small drag coefficient value combined with its low engine power mean the Tesseract is punished much less by the effects of catch up which likely plays on both of those aspects. Basically, if you're in a supercars race with catch up turned on, the Tesseract will be the best pick if there's any chance that you'll be in the lead at any point and have a chance to pull away. 
Now, there's plenty of faster cars for both lap time and top speed than the Tesseract, so you might get caught by quicker cars with a good driver behind the wheel like you normally would with catch-up turned off in the same situation, but you'll be going a lot quicker in first place than you would in any other car when catch-up is turned on. Maybe that's where the myth of the Tesseract being the fastest car in the game comes from, given catch-up is turned on by default in public lobbies. But that's it for this one. I've done as much as I'm willing to do to test the effects of what is, quite frankly, a pretty awful feature for racing that should be turned off by default, not on. Outside of Panto catch-up racing, of course, that's just good fun. I hope you all enjoyed and this video shed some light on a much maligned feature. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.